We'll start with marks of addition using fibre, paper, modelling and sprigs. The first one we'll look at is the use of fibre. This is dipped in a liquid clay, uh, clay or a slip and then attached to the surface and during the firing process when it gets to that point the fibers will burn away but they'll leave the pattern of what uh, was there before. So I'm just going to dip these in the slip here and then drape them onto the pot. This is just burlap that we're using and this is a thick slip um, here. So what we can do is just squeeze out some of the this is a delightfully messy thing to do, but lots of fun and can create really quite interesting patterns on the surface of the object. It can be draped loosely or tightly over the object and just put into place where everyone wants it to be. You can spray it with different colors of, of uh, oxides and uh, various coloring approaches or you can use colored slips to do it and uh, attach it to the surface but it provides quite an interesting textured background for future or for further development. I roughened the burlap up by pulling out a number of different strands and uh, widening the the mesh of the burlap so that it's not just a straight a uh, squared pattern of fiber becomes much more interesting the way that the uh, surface will develop from it. We will flatten it as much as is possible to the pot without losing the patterns of the fibers that are there. Other techniques or other fabrics that, that can be used are various forms of net and lace and muslin, anything that will quickly absorb some of the liquid clay and then be able to be applied to the surface. I'm just going to apply these pieces of, um, of lace, uh, soaking them first in a slip and then applying them to that surface. This same technique has been used historically to create a lot of different um, uh, patterns for uh, figurines, figurines that have lace dresses are done in this way, a lot of things that come from uh, Meissen and Dresden in Germany and various parts of, of England um, have this same sort of technique used in them for creating these lacy patterns. I'm going to work into this with just a little bit of paper that is soaked again in the slip and applied to the surface. There are quite a number of different ways that paper can be used. Um, very often these days uh, a lot of artists are using uh, paper which is made into a pulp with the clay and added to it and then it can be used for creating quite a lot of different sculptural sort of things. Um, I'm just using newspaper here dipped in the slip and the newspaper will burn away in the firing and uh, leave a a raised pattern that once it's finished firing and gone through the glaze firing it will be uh, quite substantial before then it's rather fragile but uh, um, if once one gets it to the glaze uh, fire stage it's quite substantial you can create quite a lot of different uh, surfacing variations in using paper in this way this small porcelain piece at the front here by Sue Hara of uh, Canada uh, has paper added to the uh, piece of aperture over there which gives this beautiful translucent quality with the light passing through it. And as far as the fiber draped uh, surfaces we can see here the raw part with, with what I just did and here's a finished example of the same sort of technique used by uh, Pauline Pelletier of uh, Quebec and possibly she has integrated copper in with the slip that creates these soft blue turquoise and greys and pink colors uh, when the pot has been fired in reduction.
another technique which uh, employs variations in surface, both raised and cut away, is that of modeling and additive pieces, um, which you can also uh, cut away parts of it as well. So what I'm going to do here on this piece is just do um, a small uh, modeled chrysanthemum flower, just taking little balls of clay, applying them to the slightly dampened surface and pressing it in with the finger so that we'll have a whole series of different small floral patterns occurring. These are just small balls of soft clay that are pressed into the surface. And then I can uh, take another small coil of clay and use it as the stem of the flower. Just press it down onto the surface a little bit. I could either add leaves that are made to it or I can uh, take a knife or another tool and just cut the sort of pattern of leaves just very simply in that uh, surface. So we've got variation occurring in the way that the glaze will affect the surface. 